What's up guys, Chris here with Cohesive Friendship Unit, just me today. We're gonna be talking Oculus Quest 2. And I know a lot of you are probably like, hey, there's no confirmation yet, but there actually is confirmation that the Oculus Quest line will continue and we're going to talk about everything we know about the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, and I'm gonna try to uh, minimize speculation. So a lot of it I will at least be citing where it comes from and I'll try to put links for those two videos in the description where I pulled everything from. But we are doing a giveaway at 1400 subs. We are less than 100 subs away from that number guys. We are giving away a steam copy of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy. So if you love us, sub us, eh, throw us a like and let me know down in the comments how hyped you are for that Oculus link coming soon. But that's for a later video. Let's talk Oculus Quest 2. I think we can all admit that Oculus Connect 6, the Rift S was shafted and the Quest has a bright future ahead. Oculus admitted they are making them as fast as they can sell them. Uh, but what is that future and what does that sequel to a future look like? Well, right off the bat at day one of Oculus Connect 6, uh, it, was, it was acknowledged that there will be another Quest. For Quest today, then our goal is to make it work on all future quests as well. Zuckerberg said word for word in future quests. He used that terminology. So it's safe to say the quest line will be continuing. It makes sense. It is the VR hit that we have been waiting for. Uh, but right off the bat, he did say future quests. Not only did he say future quests, but he said quest one content will be forward compatible with future quests. So that's the first thing that I want to talk about for the Oculus Quest 2 is that Oculus Quest 1 content will be playable. And we've kind of seen some impressive uh, porting work going from the Oculus Go over to the Oculus Quest 1 and even in a, in a similar but different way going from the Oculus Quest 2 PC VR with the Oculus Link. So uh, Oculus is really trying to bring the Quest, centralize it and get all of the content they can and then keep that content going forward. That will incentivize developers to not only build content now so that it can be played in the future, but give, the, give developers a reason to start building content now rather than wait uh, an unknown amount of time for an Oculus Quest 2. Uh, so that is the first thing we know. It's going to have all of your old Oculus Quest content. That was one of my biggest problems going into the Oculus Quest. I said, hey, I'm not sure about this ecosystem. Not sure how I feel about being locked down. Am I going to have to buy Beat Saber a third time when I upgrade my Quest? Looks like the answer to that will be no. Next thing I want to talk about is well, what kind of hardware improvements can we look forward to for the Oculus Quest 2? The first thing I want to talk about is Half Pipe 2. The latest prototype that Oculus is sharing with us. Uh, there are two notable improvements on Half Pipe 2. Variable focal prototype, uh, it's a variable focal prototype headset, which we'll talk about in a minute, but uh, they did specifically acknowledge that the field of view is going to be 20% more than the Oculus Quest. So what's interesting about that is they specifically called out the Quest and not the Rift S. Not that the Rift S got a whole lot of love, uh, unfortunately, F in the chat for the Rift S, but 20% more for the Quest, which makes me think uh, they are looking at this from a Quest kind of viewpoint. And the next thing I want to talk about is, well, beyond field of view, what kind of benefited tech is this half pipe to developing? Well, variable focal states. Essentially, uh, if you bring objects closer, it's going to allow for the sharpness to be retained to those objects. You're going to have different points of focus, much like in real life, if you focus on an object at a different depth. and yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're looking at. That may not sound like a big deal, and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but uh, it, it is a big deal uh, when you're always trying to combat the screen door effect and the visuals and the limited uh, amount of pixels that these displays can drive. It's always good to come up with visual improvements. Personally, I'm most excited for the 20% more field of view. And they were talking about uh, making this 
process more efficient, fewer moving parts, smaller, smaller, smaller. Not to mention that they basically only talked about Oculus Quest and they specifically pointed at that field of view for Oculus Quest and not the Rift or the Rift S, making me think that this tech is exactly what we will be seeing in a sequel to the Oculus Quest. So again, 20% more field of view. Again, I'm more excited for that. And then the variable focal states Next, we're going to shift to day two of the Oculus keynote, uh, where Carmack actually had two really key things that I want to talk about that could pertain uh, to the hardware. The first is a 90 hertz panel. Uh, it's no secret that one of the biggest problems with the Oculus Quest is that it's not running games at 90 hertz. Uh, and, and part of the reasoning behind that is, well, the processor is a little weak and the battery is a little weak, but the panel itself is actually fine. And Carmack said they actually have had this panel driving 90 hertz and they could unlock it at 90 hertz. It is feasibly possible to unlock our current Oculus Quest to run at 90 hertz, but it was just too hard to eke out the performance necessary uh, as well as the necessary uh, regulations and the battery life that would come with it so if they were to unlock it there would be performance issues your quest battery would be even lower and they would have to get the device recertified which they said they're not willing to do that being said they acknowledged and they even made the device with 90 hertz in mind originally so it's feasible to say that 90 hertz is not out of the question how are we going to drive those 90 hertz experiences well number of ways Carmack said to look forward to more state-of-the-art processors with more custom logic going forward. Uh, Carmack specifically, and, and here's the thing, like the Quest is amazing for what it is using a somewhat dated chip. If that chip was maybe the most current chip, like, you know, this year's flagship chip, maybe we would have been running games at 90 hertz and maybe they had maybe they picked the panel before they were fully sold on the chip seems like the chip kind of had to be where it was just the way the deals landed uh, again that that second day keynote super interesting but uh it looks like that panel the original idea was to run things at 90 hertz and now we're looking at more state-of-the-art processors carmack said this original quest was kind of a a dry run we were just trying to make it work now that we have things working and we have deals and we have partnerships and the the wheels are rolling so to speak they know what they're doing and they know what they're getting into to expect more current processors going forward maybe not the top of the line but even one step up would be great and that would maybe allow for some 90 hertz experiences not only that but it's almost 100% certain that the next iteration of the Quest will be more powerful and if all of the Quest 1 content is going to be forwards compatible that might be where you get your 90 hertz experiences maybe they come out with the Quest 2 90 hertz 20% more field of view variable focal states all of your Quest 1 content plays with it and that you get to play at 90 hertz but then maybe uh, Quest 2 content plays at 72 hertz or something you know they can they can play with the frame rate uh however they need to or do the the time warp stuff but it's just an idea uh he also talked about getting some like low level logic in on the chips uh which would allow them to eke out even more performance but speaking of chips i did just want to take a look just out of curiosity right and i know these are benchmarks they don't represent everything especially uh vr performance because that's just a whole nother ball but if you look at some comparison charts of multi-core and single core between the Snapdragon 835 and the 855, 835 is what's in your current Quest and the 855 is kind of like the flagship Android chip. Now it's like what the Pixel 4 is rocking, for, for instance. Uh, the, the performance is about double going, going from the chip in the Quest to kind of the, the, the modern, not top of the line, but pretty damn close. So I would say we can expect at least a doubling in performance, assuming it comes out next year, which I don't really think it will. So we could even be looking at like a 4X performance by the time the Quest 2 lands. Uh, that would make your Quest 1 content look and run crispy, not to mention the low level stuff that they're adding in. Uh, the last thing that I do wanna talk about is that I personally think the Quest 2 will be the Rift 2. 
I don't think there will be that distinguishing factor anymore. And the reason I think that uh, is because, I mean, I already kind of talked about, like, I, I'm not sure if there's much reason to buy uh, a Rift S, especially at the current price point. Maybe the price dropped, I could see it. Uh, and again, I haven't personally used the link yet, but I will be covering it, so sub if you want to see that. But I think they shipped the Quest 2 with the ironed out uh, link, you know, like I'm sure the link will have a few kinks that they, they work it out. You launch the Quest 2 with a longer USB-C cable. USB-C cables will have gone down in price by then a little bit. So you launch the Quest 2 or maybe you even launch a, a link ver skew of the Quest 2. It's like 50 bucks more. You get the extra long USB-C cable for, for hooking up to your PC. And yeah, that's it. Like you, your Quest 2 is your Rift 2. Uh, you can plug it into your PC if you want, or you can just play it totally on the go, or you can treat it kind of like a Switch thing, where which is kind of how I plan on using my Quest, like basically a Nintendo Switch when I'm at home. Uh, I or you know in my back room with my desktop, I plug it in, and I get the full experience when I'm on the go, or when I'm you know in my living room or bedroom, and I just want to play some Poker Stars or something. I use the portable version, and I think that's kind of what we're looking at. I personally think uh, that the Quest 2 will be the Rift 2 formally. And the last thing I do just want to briefly mention is Control Labs. Uh, Control Labs, I think, is going to be leaning more on the AR side of things. Um, and yeah, we could talk software experience. Quest 2 will obviously have hand tracking and all that good stuff, but uh, I don't see the I don't, so so it's like a neural interface. I don't see what Control Labs is doing as being 100% uh, relevant uh, for the Quest 2 at the moment. Seems like there's a long way to go as far as integration. And uh, yeah, the last thing I'll say is it's hard to gauge when the Quest 2 is gonna come out. One, because the Quest is selling so well, so you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Two, because we need uh, technology to progress to a point where it's justified. You know, we need that half pipe two prototype to be ready to rock and roll, and we need the right chi chips to drive that. Uh, and and three, it's it's hard to say because these are all driven off mobile chips, so you could feasibly refresh it every year. Uh, I personally see a, a two year refresh cycle on this. And they did mention that they're planning on supporting the Quest 1 for at least three years. So it wouldn't surprise me if in two years we get the Quest 2, but there's still support for the Quest 1. Depends how it sells, right? It really does. But hey, guys, that's all for me. Let me know what you think about the video down below, and I will catch you guys next time.